Recently, there's been some controversy over the new pricing of Adobe's Creative Cloud, the Lightroom and Photoshop packages in particular. Basically, in a nutshell, it's blooming going up again. And I know a lot of people in the photography community are sick to the teeth of monthly subscriptions or even annual subscriptions. So if you're sick of paying out monthly or yearly and would rather have a free or single payment alternative to Lightroom, this is the video for you. I'm going to cover my three favorite entirely free options and then my three favorite alternatives where it's just one payment and you're done. I will add I am not sponsored by any software mentioned in this video because I am going to be quite critical and honest. I am a Lightroom fan as much as the pricing annoys me. So yes, not sponsored by any of the photo editing softwares in this video. This video is however sponsored by Artlist, which I shall talk about later. Okay, let's get stuck in without further ado. Free stuff. Everybody likes free stuff. So in at number three for my entirely free options is Darktable. This is available for Mac and Windows, and it's completely like open source and it will be free forever and ever, amen. It's losing points and it's in third place because it isn't recognizing my Lumix files. I've got files from the S9 and the G9 too, and it's just having none of it. So double check which camera you have as to whether it will be compatible. You can see here that we have a lot of similar things to Lightroom, but it's not quite as user friendly. There is a search bar. So for example, if you're looking for like highlights and shadows, you can type in highlights and shadows. I would need to invest a lot of time looking at video tutorials to wrap my head around this one. And it doesn't work for most of my more modern Lumix cameras, so that's why it's number three. In a nutshell, you can catalogue and rank your images. You can import presets in the form of LUTs or cube files. So all my presets are compatible with everything that is LUT compatible. There's a lot of different things that you can do with this program. It seems quite in depth, but it's one that you will have to invest a little bit of time in to learn, in my opinion. Number two is Raw Therapy, another open sourced freebie, which which is free forever. Now this will accept my Lumix RAW files. So that's a plus point and why it's in number two for me personally, but check if your camera is compatible. And I think right off the bat with RAW therapy versus Darktable, if you are used to the Lightroom language, this will look a heck of a lot more familiar to you. You know, you've got your exposure and then you've got your blacks, you've got your shadows, you've got your highlights. It's very similar. We have our histogram, we have how we can access our other photographs. Between Darktable and RAW therapy, I think RAW therapy, <laughs> you can hit the ground running a lot quicker. It's it's much more uh, intuitive in my experience. You can also add in LUTs as your presets and you can catalog and, and sort of rate your images as well. If you don't have an Olympus slash OM system camera, then I would recommend Raw Therapy for the completely free alternative. But if you do have an Olympus or OM system camera, you have a completely free editing option called OM Workspace. And all you need to do to activate it is look at the serial number of your camera and then you can download it for free. I'll put the link in the description for all of the software that I mentioned. So inside the program, it's very easy to navigate and find your raw files. And the raw processing on the right is quite nice and user friendly. So for example, in the basic tab, that's the one that looks very much like Lightroom, where we have our white balance and temperature at the top. We have highlights and shadows. One thing that really impressed me about this software, given that it's free as well, is I was prompted to download AI noise reduction as an update, free, and it actually does a blooming good job. You go into the noise tab, press noise reduction priority. There isn't much you can do to toggle the strength of the intensity and you don't have as much sort of control over it as other programs, but it tidies things up pretty well, to be honest. One thing I will note about this software though, is it does take a little minute for the edits to be seen on the images themselves. And I don't have a slow machine. So when you move a slider, there's often a little bit of a delay and then it'll show. And that's not just because I'm screen recording. I found this when I wasn't screen recording. So it can be quite sluggish, but in terms of coming from Lightroom and having a lot of features, 
if you have the appropriate camera, I think you may as well download this because it's free. You can stitch panoramas, you can layer up images. Obviously downside is it only works if you have a certain camera, but I found it the most intuitive of the free options personally. If you don't have an OM system or Olympus camera, then I think raw therapy is probably the most intuitive. But I have to say that these free options are still mm, not the one for me. I think with a little bit of money, that you just pay once and then never have to think about again, you can get much, much better solutions. And that's what this video is really about. So let's get into my three Lightroom alternatives where you pay once upfront and you own the software forever. So in at number three for me is Capture One Pro. Now this used to be an exclusive free piece of software for Fujifilm and Sony users called uh, Capture One Express, I believe, but they've since done away with that and now they've changed it to Old Faithful the subscription models, but there is a one-off payment option as well. The downside is it is eye-wateringly expensive. It's currently two nine nine. Now I don't know if this is one that has offers on or not, but this is why this one's in third place because it's very expensive. So there is a free trial available to this one as well. You get a thirty-day free trial, which is quite nice. It will accept any and all cameras that I've thrown at it, including more recent cameras which is nice and as you can see here again it looks very very similar to Lightroom uh, even in terms of the same layout you've got everything more or less where it would be in Lightroom and you can see when I'm editing that it's quite instantaneous there's not much lag it's very nice and chill on the system which I enjoy very much. You're gonna find your way around within moments using this. You've even got like very similar HSL sliders so you can pick a color and it'll just isolate that color. A 299 is spenny, oh my God. I mean, that's several years of Lightroom subscription. So whether it's worth it or not to you, who knows? There's also some more advanced features to this where you can tether uh, to the computer and shoot like in studio work. So if you are more of a studio photographer, you may have capture one on your radar already if you're just wanting it for editing purposes though i think you know it's expensive man in at number two in my experience i'm gonna vote for luminar neo now i know this has had kind of a bad rap in the past because it's been quite sluggish on certain people's computers but to my knowledge the update that they did mid last year has solved that and it's never been too sluggish on my mac personally currently my notes tell me there is a lifetime license for 99 pounds but there is offers on all the time i think i might actually still be an affiliate from when i reviewed them years ago so so yeah, I'll stick a discount code if I've got one. I don't know if I have or not. The develop tab here is where you'll see it look very similar to Lightroom. I quite like that you do have all these different modules. You know, Darktable and Raw Therapy, they have this modular design, but it's not user friendly in my opinion. Like this is all laid out for you in black and white dead easy to understand. If you want denoise, you click denoise. If you want to turn it black and white, you click black and white. If you want to revert it, there's a revert button. If you want to toggle what you've done, there's an eyeball button. I think it's very, very user friendly. You can add LUTs in. Uh, my favorite LUT for this sort of stuff is probably Streetwise from my City Escape pack. And you can turn up and down the intensity to taste. I get along well with this software. Uh, I prefer Lightroom, but I'll prefer Lightroom to blooming anything. But this is very nice. I think you can get some good edits from it. I actually use Luminar as a plugin from Lightroom. Uh, it works very well in tandem, mostly for one specific module, which is the glow module. So you can add a brush, choose whatever you want. I'm going to choose the sign and a bit of the dragon and maybe that sign as well. And then there's loads of different options, but I love the Autumn effect. And if you was it up, you can see what it does. You know, it gives you like that mist filter look, but if you add it subtly in, I think that's quite nice. I think that adds something to it. So that was the raw file. And that's the edit that I've done just while I'm chatting crap to you guys. <laughs> and I love the Autumn effect in particular. So that's without and that's with, let me just zoom in. And as you can see, it's super duper fast and, and fine on my system. Yeah, so that's number two. Uh, for 99 quid, let me just double check. There is a subscription to this as well, just so you know, just so you know, because everything has a blooming subscription, you can do it 59 quid a year, which seems dumb, 
or you can have a lifetime perpetual license for £99. Let me just quickly tell you about the sponsor of this video, which is Artlist, and then we'll get back to the nerdiness, I promise. My favourite showcases of different sponsors on this channel come from things that I use every single day. And Artlist is one of those companies. I use Artlist music for my YouTube videos and my wedding business and everything in between. Artlist is a service that gives you the highest quality royalty free music all in one handy dandy place, but it has so many more tricks up its sleeve than that. For instance, one thing that I'm really having fun with, a lot more fun than I should be, <laughs> is the AI voiceover feature. All I want, honestly, is a tiny micro four thirds camera with phase detect autofocus for under 800 pounds. Is that too much to ask? So if you're creating a piece of content and you want some really professional polished voiceovers, you don't need to hire anyone anymore. You can just type in what you want it to say and it will do it for you. And I also really love the art board feature as well. Tell it your project and it will give you sound effects and music that will match the mood and the vibe that you're going for. I don't know about you, but if you've spent time creating content that needs music, sometimes you can lose hours in the archives trying to find that perfect piece of music and Artlist makes it super easy for you by giving you these ways to access things quickly and easily. So check out the link in the description after you've finished watching this video, of course, and let's get back to the photo editing nerdiness. But wait, there's more. In researching this list, I found what I would consider a hidden gem that I haven't heard many people talk about. And that piece of software in first place for me is ON1. So this is ON1 Photo Raw. Not the best name in the world, but we'll forgive it because it's a really interesting piece of software. So there is a 30 day trial for this as well. I'll link it in the description if you want to give it a go. So it says that the standard price is over 200 quid, but between me and you, I've been researching this video for a number of weeks and all January it's told me the same offer. So the Strike Me is a company that will always have good offers on is, is what I'm saying. So you can get this outright forever and ever and ever with a one-time payment, no subscription for 50 quid. So that's half the price of Luminar Neo and less than six months worth of Lightroom as an equivalent. And what I think gives the edge over Luminar, in my opinion, there's two things. One is this is an American company that seems to have a lot of educational content for free. Like when you sign up, you get uh, an email uh, every day that shows you how to use certain things. There's video tutorials. Uh, there's loads and loads and loads of support. Sometimes with Luminar, I think you kind of thrown in and left to the devices of hapless YouTubers to uh, guide you. So having lots of free education on this software is great. And the second thing that I really like about ON1 is there is a lot of Photoshop crossover here. So if you're giving up Lightroom and Photoshop, this software has both the Lightroom stuff and a smattering of the Photoshop stuff as well. Okay, let's start with this one. Not the most inspired photo I've ever taken, but it's a good example. So in the develop tab, we see the usual suspects, uh, very light on the system, instant changes when I move things, which is what I like to see. Uh, exactly the same. I dare say a Lightroom rip off at this point. Um, structure, dehaze, it's all there. We've got all of the white balance stuff. We've got noise reduction, lens correction, transform, etc., etc., etc. So you've got all the Lightroom stuff. It'll look very familiar to you. Down the side here is where we access more stuff. So if you click more, we've got sky swap, portrait AI, resize AI. What I'm looking for is the healing brush, which looks like little Harry Potter glasses. <laughs> There's loads of different options, uh, like a traditional clone stamp, but the generative eraser is what I'm interested in because if this could be, as I say, a replacement for Photoshop and Lightroom, that's pretty cool. And we're going to try and erase this lady. Okay, I'm going to press generate. And this is something that's more Photoshop-esque, like the generative AI. Uh, let's see. It's about the same time, maybe a little bit slower. Yeah, definitely a little bit slower. But it's thinking about it. Ha! That's done a cracking job. Yeah. And as you can see here, uh, we're editing in layers non-destructively. Nothing on the original layer is getting ruined as we're doing this. And you can also add in LUT, which is nice. And it also has a really 
big library of presets as well. Different packs. It reminds me of Visco, if you've ever used that. So there's loads of nice stuff built in, actually. Like, that's not shabby. That's nice. I like that. So I've just closed the software and opened it again to show you that when you um, open it up, you are given immediately, there's loads that you can do and there's a full video library to access as well, which I think's like, you know, if you're coming to a new piece of software, either as a beginner or from something else, that's sort of worth its weight in gold. And it also has the autumn effect, glow effect that's similar to Luminar as well. So you do get uh, a lot of what Lightroom can do. You do get a lot of, of like the retouching ability that you can do in Photoshop. And there's some fun things that Luminar can do as well, like the, uh, the glow effect, all in one piece of software, which is half the price of Luminar and basically peanuts to own outright. So that's why ON1 Photo Raw is my best alternative for 2025. I'll be 100% with you. I'm not changing from Lightroom, even though I'm angry at the price increase. But if I absolutely had to, like if you held my elderly dogs hostage, I would choose ON1. Absolutely. Without hesitation. And then second choice would be Luminar. But things are far from perfect. Uh, you know, this is a good alternative, but there will be some compromises along the way. One of those is noise reduction. I am a big fan of Lightroom AI noise reduction. I think it's blooming excellent. So I think for noise reduction, Lightroom is still king. For your app integration, if you want to edit on a tablet, Lightroom is still king. Uh, though Capture One Pro has an app as well, I believe. There's a lot to love about Lightroom and that's why they charge what they do because they know they've cornered the market somewhat. But for everyday editing, I think there's some great alternatives in this video.